Hi, in this video we're going to look at some more of the technology I've created as part of my code base. Uh, I won't get into the details, I'll put some information in the uh, video description and there's other videos that cover what it is, but um, it's a large, it's a large uh, uh, chunk of code and um, you know, obviously for any large chunk of code you want to have um, tests that you can run in an, auto, in an automated sort of way. And um, since I do my own stuff, I have my own test framework as well. And we're going to look at that here today. In order to make that more comprehensible, I have created a diagram here that we'll go through first, and then we'll look at the, the code. One of the core things that you have to worry about, of course, with a test framework is that you don't want the programs destabilizing the framework and making it unable to actually report. So we generally want to run the test as separate programs. So you need to be able to invoke those and then somehow get the information back into the test framework for reporting. In our case, we use some uh, buffers here, some in and out buffers. So we have a test framework program itself, and then we have the test programs that we're going to run. So the test framework pushes information to them through a buffer. They do their thing, and they put the results back in the test framework and grabs them and stores them away until it's done, and then it dumps them all out to be um, uh, evaluated. I have far fancier ways to um, talk between programs, but there are bootstrapping issues involved here. So we want to use the most primitive stuff possible that we can get away with for the test framework itself. Basically, let's look at here. We look at what's going on. We have a configuration file, and that configuration file will define a number of test programs. It will provide some information about them, descriptions, etc. And then it will also define groups of test programs. Some of these things will take a long time to run, and you don't want to continuously run those long ones if you're really just trying to concentrate on something specific. So what happens is the, the test framework loads the config file, stores up that information, and then for every one of the programs that's in the group that, he, that it was asked to run, it loads up information in the test buffer and invokes that test. The program has uh, an overall test results uh, class, and then it has a class for individual test results. So it creates a test results, overall test results object. It runs each of the tests and puts the results into that, and it streams it back into the test results buffer. And then it tells the test framework, I'm done. And the test framework grabs that, stores it, moves on to the next program, and so forth. At the end, it will use a output formatter to format that test information. Um, there could be multiples currently. I only have an HTML one. If you're in a, uh, a group type of environment or you know a more challenging environment, you might want to have uh, an XML or something like that type of formatter. And then that could be read by some other program and used to, I don't know, send out emails, send out employee termination notifications, whatever you would like to do, maybe update a, a bug database. Anyway, uh, obviously these guys need to share a little bit of information. So there is a test framework library down here, and that defines the test result stuff, the base class for the test programs. Obviously, we want to have some common base class that we can uh, implement all of these in terms of. It, it, it defines the, um, the test information buffer stuff as well between them. So that's the information they need to share. That's all fairly straightforward. And uh, next, we'll go ahead and take a look at the actual code itself. Okay, so let's get rid of this image here and let's uh, take a look at the code. Um, first, let's look here. I'm just in one of the test uh, directories and each one of these directories here has a, one of the test programs. So there are various uh, programs. Most of these are just to, to test a particular library. And then there up here, I just have a set of uh, command files that are set up to invoke the test framework for specific groups of tests, just to make it quick and easy to run specific test sets. Um, and here's the configuration file for these. Let's take a quick look at that. There's not a lot in it, but let's quickly look at it. So it, um, it defines each of the tests. So these are the test programs. It gives a, a path to it and a short description. And root is just the top level of that particular set of, of tests. And in this case, I think they're all just directly under the root. This is a, not a particular complex one. And then it defines groups. And for each group, it gives a description and a list of the test programs to run. So this one core here, it runs um, the basic Sidlib guy, math, and text encoding. And there are various other combinations. And we could add more. These are just ones I've created so far that have been useful for me. But you could create any kind of random set of them. That's all pretty straightforward. And so let's take a look at the code here. So we're in the general purpose code base here. If you have looked at either of the any of some of the other videos, you know, this is like uh, our automation platform code base here. This is the general purpose stuff. So go down here and it's in utilities. 
and we have the test framework library and the test framework uh, itself that we just saw in the diagram. So let's take a look at the library here. And there's not a lot of code and it's not a whole lot of stuff required to do this. So let's look at this guy first. We have a the um, base um, class that all tests are derived from. And it's very simple, primarily exists to, to have them override this and run their tests. So for each of the tests, they we get some derivative of this of this class here, and we invoke run test on it. It runs a test, it returns an overall result, and it streams some uh, arbitrary output to this um, uh, text output stream if they have anything to report. And they can also uh, set a warning flag. Even if the test actually worked, um, uh, there might be things that it's worried about even though nothing fails, so it can set a separate warning flag. Each of the tests has a level that it will assign itself, and that's from one to 10, and that just lets us do more filtering. So you might say only run the test up to level five or something like that so that you can better control um, how many tests run. And that level is basically just a, a rough reflection of how far up the, the software food chain it is, really. Each test has a description and its uh, name within the overall uh, test application, its subname. So this is information, that these two, that come from the, uh, uh, the configuration file. So the derive uh, the derive test creates itself and 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 uh, calls the constructor here to give us the info and we just store it away. So that's all we got to do. And then the overall test application itself, uh, we have some stuff that some virtual methods that they have to override. And these are pretty obvious things: initialization when we first start up, termination when we're done. Uh, ask it, okay, now go ahead and load all your tests up. And then for each, uh, after each test, we can let them do some post work. And before each test runs, we let them, let them do some pre-work to get ready for it because sometimes they need to set stuff up and tear stuff down around the test and that sort of thing. So these are just all virtuals that the test application needs to override. Um, this is where the, the test application is started, the, the main thread of it. And so it basically gets started here and it's, it uh, goes through its list of tests and just in, in, invokes these uh, virtuals up here as required. Uh, our data is basically we need a, a list of tests. Um, they are, you know, uh, polymorphic. I mean, you know, they're not, they're heterogeneous, so we need a polymorphic list. They can be all different types derived from this basic test uh, framework test uh, class. And so the, the derived class just creates his tests and calls us here to add each one to us, add this test, add that test. So at the end, we end up with just a list of, of tests to run. And we store that information down here. So not a lot going on there, right? I won't bother even looking at the actual code because it's so basically straightforward. This is not really worth digging into that. Um, uh, so the test connection stuff, this is where we kind of keep up with the buffers that we use to communicate and the information that gets passed in those buffers. So we have the test results for one test, right? So for each of the individual tests within the test application, we need to store results. And it's pretty straightforward. You know, we have the warning flag that we saw, the results flag that we saw, and we also copy over into the the results, the description and the name, so that that information can be used when we format out all the data, right? Because we need to know what tests we're reporting on when we dump out the information. And this is the output from the test. Other than you know the result, they can output arbitrary data. And normally I wouldn't do this, but we provide direct access to that output string. And we'll see later that we just basically put a, uh, a, a uh, text output stream over the string. And that's how the test dumps out the information to it. And of course we support binary streaming because we need to be able to dump, we need to be able to be streamed into the buffer and later uh, streamed back out. And then we just, that's all the data that we just saw up above being stored. And then there's an overall test application results. And that's very simple. It's basically just a list of, of results from each of the individual tests. So for each of the tests that gets run, we call add test result to add each test, each individual test result to our list. And it has just a couple of helpers here to uh, make it easier for the, um, the test framework to find specific tests and iterate through them and that kind of thing. And there again, we you know when it keeps stuff very simple here. And of course, also binary streaming. So basically, this is the thing that gets streamed back into the results buffer. It contains all the other individual tests. So we just stream one object over. And on the test framework side, when he gets when he pulls it out, he just streams this object back out, and he has all of the test results. And this is the actual connection guy here, which manages the buffers. 
and um, it just has some very basic uh, stuff here to set information on that buffer. So if we get an exception, we, we set that. If we get a kernel exception, we set that, stuff like that. We set the actual test results here. And each of these basically will set a result uh, on this particular uh, object to tell the, um, the test framework, okay, we, we completed with an error, we completed okay, et cetera. And that tells him what to stream back out, basically. Here is the actual incoming buffer, which has just a very simple structure to it. So both sides can look at it through the structure and, and exchange a little bit of it, uh, basic data. So the test framework sets this stuff on the way in, and that tells uh, the invoke test what to stream, how much data is in the actual incoming buffer to stream out, or in the results buffer to stream out. And then on the way out, we set a phase, and that's like, okay, we're working, we're running tests, we're terminating, and then at the end, it's either you know it's some sort of final uh, phase. We we completed okay, we completed with errors, we got an exception, and then we set how many buff how many bytes we actually put into the output buffer, and the phase tells the test framework how to interpret the bytes that we put in there. Is it an exception object? You know, is it a test results object? That sort of thing. So a very simple communications mechanism and very easy to do. So the, the test framework just watches this phase guy here for it to finally get to one of the final states. And so we have a shared memory buffer for the input, a shared memory buffer for the output. This one is set up to be just one page because it's, it, it will never need more than that. It doesn't change. This one I think can, can grow up to like four megabytes, worst case. And it's a shared memory buffer that's paged in, so it's fairly efficient to do that. It'll just grow as required. And then this is the structure up here, right? We want to have, we just want to be able to look at the in the uh, info buffer as that type. So we just, we get the pointer out and pointed at this so that we can look at it as that structure. And both sides will do that. And that just lets them have easy access to the information. All right, and that's it for the library. There's not a lot there. Um, let's go take a look at the test framework itself. Not a lot here either. There's the formatter guide that I was talking about. There's a base uh, formatter class and it exists primarily just to define this format results guy. So each one of the implementations of this particular base class will override this and format out the information um, in the appropriate uh, format. So it gets uh, an output path to, to stream to and some information and uh, that it will use to stream out, right? So uh, that's all fairly straightforward. And as I said before, I only have an HTML one currently. I can do others quite easily. But uh, so it just overrides this format results and formats it out appropriately. And it has like a bunch of helpers down here to help it format out that uh, that um, HTML, which is kind of, you know, usually as usual, annoying to do sometimes because of escaping and all that kind of stuff. And we also have the test info here, which is just the information from the configuration file. So for each of the programs that we read in, we, uh, we have to create a program info object to store that data. And also at the very end, we also store the test results for that, uh, for that program in here. We need somewhere to keep it. And this is the obvious place since it has all the other, other information related to that particular uh, test um, program. And then for each of the groups that are defined, uh, we have to store that information for the group and we store some stats and stuff in there as well. Right? So um, that's all, and then we, you know, obviously we need to provide access to the individual program info objects that were defined for that group. So all very straightforward there, just mostly housekeeping stuff to track the configuration data. And then just the main facility object, and um, you may not have seen in some other programs, uh, this is a common uh, concept in my stuff. So the facility represents, it's a singleton thing that represents this, the, exe the executable or library. All right, so basically this guy, it has like a, a main thread that it starts up and it just calls various things. It uh, parses the uh, parameters, it parses the config file and loads them up and then it, it checks various things as it's, as it's parsing it. And then it calls us invoke groups and that does the actual test invocations. And then at the end it will, but it will format that information out. And there's another call here somewhere to write them out. But anyway, we'll go look at that. So the main thread starts here. We get some streams out, the error and output streams. We show a blurb, we parse the command line parameters, and then here we invoke the groups that were defined. So this does all the actual test stuff. And then at the end, we generate the results. And at the very final end here, just out to the console, 
or whatever the output stream is, it might be redirected. Um, we just give a overall, you know, there were some failures or everything passed type of thing, right? And so if we look at the uh, invoke groups, that's fairly straightforward. We set up the connection guy. So this gives us our buffers to talk back and forth with, creates those shared memory buffers. And then we set up a stats object that we're gonna collect statistics for all these, all these groups we're gonna run. And then for each of the groups, we uh, find the group info. And then for each of the tests within that group, we find the test info. And we then just run those, run that test. Uh, let's see what we're doing here. We're setting, this is setting up some basic input information on the connection buffer. So we're telling it the verbosity to use in the maximum level. That's the stuff that goes in, in uh, from the test framework over to the applications. Um, we, we output saying, okay, we're about to run this particular test here that goes to the console or whatever is redirected to. And then we set up an external process here and we invoke that uh, program as an external process. And then we, uh, we, we start just watching, watching the output buffer or the input buffer for the phase to change to a phase that says we're done. And when that happens, we get back out our, our phase, uh, information. We set that on the, um, the current program and we're basically done with this guy. And so, um, we have to do a little bit of uh, stats collection here. So if it, if we got to completion, we, we set some stats related to that. If we didn't, we set some stats related to failure and so forth. And we'll see all that later when we dump out the information. And we, you know, obviously we want to catch exceptions and stuff like that, just to be sure. And then at the end, we bump some overall group pass and fail type of stats. Um, there's nothing down here. This one, this other file is just all you know, housekeeping stuff related to how we, you know, to reading in the, um, the configuration file and, and storing that information away. Um, I don't think there's anything really else useful in, that we want to look at here. Um, maybe the uh, test application, I don't know. Um, so this, if we look down here, this is when the actual um, test uh, application itself is started. It gets start the, the main thread gets started here. We create an output console to dump out output to, and uh, we parse the command lines. Oh, this is this is useful here. Um, you you obviously want to be able to test individual um, uh, programs within the debugger, and if you had to do that by way of the test framework invoking them, that would be very painful. But you can pass this test framework debug uh, flag, and it will create a dummy version of the uh, the memory buffers and manage them for you. And so you can individually debug them, which is a huge help. Very much, very, very nice to be able to do that. Let's see here. We are uh, creating the connection here. This is the the uh, test applications version of the connection, so that he can see the stuff that the test framework created. And then we are creating our overall test results output object that we're going to collect results for all of our tests. We tell the we put into the um, the memory buffer we're initializing now. And then we try to initialize and then we say we're loading our test and we do that. And then we say we're running our test. And then for each of the tests that are defined within this particular um, uh, test application, which we added to our base class, basically, or which the derived class added to us, sorry. So the derived class loaded us up with a bunch of tests. So for each one of those, we get out that test here and um, let's see what else we do here. Uh, we output a little bit of information and uh, we create a single results uh, object for this particular test here that we're going to fill in for this test. And then, as I was saying before, we set up a text output stream on this test output results guy's output string. So this is how we let the test dump stuff to his results output. And then we do a little filtering if necessary uh, on based on the level. If this one is going to run, we run the pretest stuff. We tell the derived class, we're about to run this test, do what you need to do to set up. And then we run the test and get the result back out and the warning flag back out. Uh, we store those on the test result for this test. We run the post test stuff saying, okay, we're done with this test, tear down anything we need to do. And then we out to the console, you know, this one was done or not. So that's, and then we, we add this particular uh, single test result to our overall program test results output object. 
when we get finished with all of them, we set the phase to terminate, and then we term we tell the drive class we're terminating now, do final cleanup, and then we set the test results on the uh, on the shared memory buffer, and this will set the phase to complete, and that will tell the test framework this guy's done, and we're exiting, and he'll wait for us to clean to exit and, and terminate, and then he'll grab our test results that we put into the output buffer and store them away. Right? I went through that kind of quickly. Hopefully that made sense. You can go back and and kind of take it a step at a time if you want to, but um, fairly simple stuff and not a whole lot of code involved there either. So all, overall, I mean, it's it's a fairly simple thing to do and it's quite a useful uh, little test framework. Let's go ahead and just run it here and see how it works. Um, I've actually introduced, um, purposely introduced a bug in one of the tests. So um, I'll do the core one that includes the test I want to do. So I'll do run core, which is just one of the command files up here and it runs uh, the core group. You can see it spitting out the test, and there's one that failed there. We just saw it go by. Um, we can go up here, and we can see that it was the string form formatting one. And if uh, we see at the bottom, the final guy says that there were some failures. And there's a little command file to run the, to show the output, which just invokes the default uh, browser. And so we get the output results, and it has some overall information at the top here so that we can go back and, and know what we were doing at the time, what version of, of the code was built, and so forth. And then we get stats that were collected. So there was one failed group and one failed test, uh, 45 tests overall, 44 passed, one failed. And then for each of the groups, we will get a summary down here. There was only one group that we ran, which was the core one. And we see that it was failed. And so we can click that. We'll see the um, particular tests that were within that group. And we see that those completed, this one failed. We can click on that. And we can see these are all the tests that were run within that particular test application. And the string formatting one failed, and we click on that, we can see the output from it. So within that particular file, uh, this line, uh, format of a float four failed. So let's take a look at that guy. So we go back up here to test two, that's in here. And um, that was in strings, I think it was line 162. Uh, I can't see my keyboard when I have the mic here. <laughs> it's very difficult to type. Okay, so we're looking at this one. So obviously formatting 4.4 with two decimal places would not create 4.41, it would create 4.40, I'm pretty sure. So let's save that. Let's rebuild that guy. And we can run that again. And we can see that it worked that time and we should get a little indication at the end that all groups passed. So there you go, uh, a fairly straightforward little test program or test framework, which is you know quite useful and pretty easily extensible as well. I mean, we could we could uh, fancy this up a good bit if necessary, and it would handle that pretty easily. And not a lot of code involved ultimately when you get right down to it. You know, as long as you have the uh, bits and bobs required for you know the external pro um, process stuff and that kind of thing and the memory buffer stuff is quite easy to do. Of course, you could use a file or something for those exchange mechanisms as well. I, choose, I chose a uh, memory buffer because it's you know fast and light and probably uses less uh, code underneath that than the, the file version would. But uh, anyway, it's all fairly, all fairly straightforward stuff. So hopefully you might get some benefit out of that and maybe do something of your own along these lines. And if you have any questions, obviously feel free to ask.